वेलकम वन से गेंडो अवर कॉमेज क्लासरूम दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ अवर वर्किंग कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मेथड्स ऑफ एस्टिमेटिंग वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट्स मेथड्स ऑफ एस्टिमेटिंग वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट्स एवरी बिजनेस यूनिट शुड हैव adequate working capital to run the business a firm should neither have excess or shortage of working capital both excess as well as short working capital position are bad for the business inadequacy of working capital may lead the firm to insolvency and excessive working capital implies idle funds which earn no profits for the business Working capital management policies of a firm have great effect on its profitability, liquidity, and structural health of the organization. In order to attain the objectives of working capital management, the financial manager has to perform the following functions: estimating the working capital requirements. financing of working capital needs analysis and control of working capital then we discuss methods of estimating working capital requirements the following methods are generally used in estimating working capital requirements first method net to current asset forecasting method second percentage of sales method third regression analysis method here we consider average relationship between sales and working capital fourth method cash flow forecasting method fifth one operating cycle method Sixth method, projected balance sheet method. First method, net to current asset forecasting method. Under this method, firstly we estimate the value of each current assets. After that, an estimate of current liabilities is made. The difference between the total estimated amount of current assets and current liabilities gives. the net to working capital requirements of the firm to this amount some extra amount safety margin by way of provision for contingency is added provision for contingency is generally calculated as a percentage of working capital statement of working capital requirements manufacturing concern we start with the current assets stock of materials four months amount in outer column second current asset work in progress four months work in progress comprises of raw materials direct labor overheads total shown in outer column third current asset stock of finished goods four months stock of finished goods comprises of raw materials direct labor overheads total of these three shown in outer column fourth current asset sundry debtors or receivables four months that also comprises of raw materials direct labor overheads total of these three shown in outer column fifth item payment in advance if any sixth item balance of cash required to meet day to day expenses seventh current asset 
any other current asset if any then we take the total of all these current assets then from it we deduct current liabilities first current liability creditors four months purchase of raw material second current liability outstanding expenses four months third others if any we take the total of current liabilities working capital current asset minus current liability amount shown in outer column then add with it provision or margin for contingencies then we get net working capital required working capital plus margin for contingencies is equal to net working capital required here we have to note two points first one profit should be ignored while calculating working capital requirements as funds provided by profits may or may not be used as working capital second point calculation of work in progress depends upon its degree of completion as regards material labor and overheads if nothing is given in a question as regards the degree of completion we may take 100 percentage cost of materials and 50 percentage in case of labor and overheads on the assumption that labor and overheads accrue evenly during the year then we solve one problem while preparing a project report on behalf of a client you have collected the following facts estimate the net working capital required for that project add 10 percentage to your computed figure to allow contingencies particulars the amount per unit estimated cost per unit production raw material rupees 80 direct labor rupees 30 overheads exclusive of depreciation rupees 10 per unit 60 rupees total cash cost 80 plus 30 plus 60 that comes to 170 additional information selling price rupees 200 per unit level of activity 1 lakh 4000 units of production per annum raw materials in stock average 4 weeks work in progress assume 50 percentage completion stage in respect of conversion cost and 100 percentage completion in respect of materials average 2 weeks finished goods in stock average 4 weeks credit allowed by suppliers average 4 weeks credit allowed to debtors average 8 weeks lag in payment of wages average 1.5 weeks cash at bank is expected to be rupees 25000 you may assume that production is carried on evenly throughout the year 52 weeks and wages and overheads accrue similarly all sales are on credit basis only then solution firstly we calculate current assets first item raw material raw material in stock production 1 lakh 4000 units 
per unit cost 80 raw material held in stock for 4 weeks 1 lakh 4000 into 80 into 4 divided by 52 6 lakh 40000 second current asset work in progress raw material 1 lakh 4000 units into per unit cost 80 into work in progress takes 2 weeks for completion 2 divided by 52 1 lakh 4000 into 80 into 2 divided by 52 Amount three lakh twenty thousand direct labor one lakh four thousand into fifteen into two divided by fifty two. Here we take rate only fifteen direct labor we know per unit. Rupees 30, direct labor and overheads, conversion cost, work in progress completion, only 50 percentage. So, 50 percentage of 30, that is 15, direct labor 1 lakh 4000 into 15 into 2 divided by 52, amount 60,000, overheads. 1 like 4000 into in place of 60 we take only per unit rate rupees 30 because overhead is also part of conversion cost 50 percentage completed in work in progress so 1 like 4000 into 30 into 2 divided by 52 1 like 20,000 then third current asset finished goods 1 like 4000 units into per unit cost 170 given in question into finished goods held in hand for 4 weeks before sale 4 divided by 52 amount 13 like 60000 then fourth current asset debtors Units produced and sold 1 lakh 4000 units into cost per unit 170 into credit allowed to debtors 8 weeks 8 divided by 52 amount comes to 27 lakh 20,000 fifth current asset cash at bank 25,000 then total of current assets 50 to like 45,000 then current liabilities creditors 1 like 4,000 units credit allowed by suppliers 4 weeks raw material cost per unit rupees 80 1 like 4000 into 80 into 4 divided by 52 6 like 40000 lag in payment of wages 1 like 4000 units into wage rupees 30 per unit into Lag in payment 1.5 weeks 1.5 divided by 52 amount comes to 90,000 total of current liabilities 7 like 30,000 then network capital current asset minus current liabilities 52 like 45,000 minus 7 like 30,000 amount comes to 45 like 15,000 then add 10% contingencies 
45 like 15,000 into 10 percentage that comes to 4 like 51,500 net to working capital required 45 like 15,000 plus contingencies 4 like 51,500 total 49 like 66,500 net to working capital required 49 like 66,500 I think the net to current asset forecasting method explained here is clear for all of you we will meet again in our coming sessions till then goodbye